Hello there everyone, Aiden here from Push Square. <clears throat> so, I was going to say I have actually been recovering from a bit of a cough, so this video might be a little bit shorter than expected because I will be editing out a million different coughing sessions throughout recording. But anyway, today I have with me the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition. This is a controller support device for mobile from the company Backbone and it's now getting official support and release of the new PlayStation Edition from Sony. A quick word of warning, if you have a Backbone already from the, the Backbone Edition, there's really no need to upgrade here. It isn't actually an upgrade, it's the same price, the same features, but you're getting that black and white design to match up with the PS5. You're getting the blue and white packaging to go with the accessories you can buy with the PlayStation now and little PlayStation logo in the back there as well. However, if you are new to this, like I am, this is the first you've really heard or seen this controller, then I'm here today to have a bit of a casual conversation about the things I liked, the things I didn't, and ultimately, whether this is worth your money. So let's get into it. So straight out of the box, I have to say I was pretty impressed with the build quality of this thing. So it's going to set you back just shy of £100 or $100. But you don't really need to worry about this feeling cheap in any way, that's just not the case. The buttons feel clicky, the analogs, the offset analogs that we might not be used to as PlayStation players feel really solid and have a nice click to them as well. I would say the bumpers and the triggers could do with a bit of a bit more definition because they feel as though they can roll into one together. But ultimately, the design here is really great. And really that feel continues on as you connect the phone because it's just a case of taking your iPhone, connecting it to the charger, pulling it up and slotting it down and that's you. It feels really sturdy in the hands. And if you're worrying about the size of your phone, this thing will support anywhere from the iPhone 6 all the way up to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So that is a big chunky boy of a phone. So obviously as hinted at there, the PlayStation Edition currently only has an iPhone version of this. Android support is coming. However, if you wanted it right now, you'd have to buy the Backbone Edition, which has both Android and iPhone versions. So that has meant that I've had to dig out my old iPhone 10. So apologies for the cracks that you may be seeing in the B-roll footage. However, I have a Samsung now, there's your reasoning. What I do like though about the size range is it means that if you were lucky enough to have the Pro Max uh, iPhone 13, you are playing on a big, visually dynamic, crystal clear screen and that will only elevate your experience overall. So to get things up and running, all I really needed was the Backbone app, setting up a new account and then the PS Remote Play app. There is the option for Backbone Plus which will give you additional perks and rewards and this will set you back around $50 a year. I felt that once things were set up, you didn't really need it. However, that is just me, so of course I'll let you have a look at that and decide for yourself. Once you have the foundation set though, everything is super easy to use. You can connect to Remote Play through the app without the controller connect the controller and it automatically is ready to go. This thing is powered by the phone so there's no need to charge up the battery and if your phone is a little low, luckily you have a little uh, charging port here so you can use it while charging and additionally you have the 3.5mm jack there for your headphones. Additional buttons we have on the device are the Backbone Home button which will switch you over to that app and back. You also have the Options button and over on the left here are the capture and record options. This actually through the app will allow you to capture 1080p 60fps. That is really impressive. There were a couple of things that I felt were missing however, namely a home button replacement and a touchscreen replacement. Now of course the touchpad is a little difficult considering it's a touchpad. However, a lot of the games just use a tap to open a map and instead now you are having to tap the screen to open the, the touch screen button prompt and then hold it down there. So it was a little bit of an issue and I found that going back to the home page, 
if it's just a bit of a hassle and it's sort of lost some of the appeal of this very physical version of mobile gaming instead of the touchscreen version. But then onto the actual gaming experience and this is one of the biggest issues with the Backbone 1 and it's nothing to do with it. Remote play is so dependent on your internet connection that it really can make or break the entire experience. I have pretty decent internet here and I was struggling at times with dipped resolution and really laggy gameplay. But at times when it did work, it worked pretty well. But I do think you have to be selective of the kinds of games you're playing. I was trying out Watch Dogs 2 for some reason and The Last of Us Part 1 and these games worked pretty well. I didn't feel like there was too much of a downgrade. However, when you went to something a little more intense like Destiny 2, it just, it just wasn't working. It was too laggy. Uh, obviously the dipped resolution at times, it just didn't have the capacities to take that high intensity first person experience, it just all felt wrong. So of course if you decide to get this thing, you're going to have to experiment with the types of games to see what works for it. And in most cases I found that if it was too high intensity and experience, I would just much rather come home and sit down in front of the TV to play it. But of course, the Backbone 1 isn't just in use for PlayStation Remote Play. You also can use this thing for cloud gaming, for Xbox, PC, Steam support. And then you can just use basic mobile games. This will be a massive step up for the likes of Call of Duty Mobile or Apex Legends. So if you're really into those types of games, this will be a massive help. This is definitely worth your money in that department. It doesn't have to just be looked at through the PlayStation perspective. I will say that not every game supports controller peripherals. So if there's games that you play quite a lot, have a look to see if they support controller devices like this and then make your decision from there. But overall, I feel like this thing's worth is entirely dependent on the user. I'm not really a big mobile gamer, so trying this thing out was a bit of a novelty kind of like pretending I had the PS Vita 2 in my hands, but ultimately it's worth is going to depend on how much you're into it. Do you play mobile games a lot? Do you like the idea of taking these PlayStation experiences on the go? And of course, we know now that Sony are pushing hard for mobile gaming with their new mobile gaming division, the acquisition of Savage. They are going to be bringing a lot more PlayStation IP to the mobile gaming space. So this could even be viewed as an investment of sorts for when more opportunities from the PlayStation perspective are made available. And then to take it one step further, looking at the practicalities of this thing, if you don't own one of these or a third party version, you're either playing on the touchscreen or connecting your DualSense. This is just far more practical. It's easy to connect, seamlessly integrated with your iPhone and then if you want to put it away in your bag, just pull it up, let it go, stuff it in a pocket, there you go. It's very easy to use, it's seamlessly integrated, although I wouldn't recommend using it for too long. I have pretty big hands and I just felt it was a little awkward to use after a while, almost a little uncomfortable, but I do have this issue with the Switch as well. But anyway guys, thank you for watching. Let us know down below what you think of the Backbone 1. Is it something you would be interested in buying? And what do you think of that £100 price tag? Is that too high? Just about right? Let me know down below. And as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you next time on Push Square. Bye.